Hey guys, this is Merciless Wolf from Merciless Mafia Gaming. My real name's Damien, so you know that's just something to put for the future. And right now, I'm deciding to go ahead and do a little let's play by myself while I sort out issues with recording all those GTA shenanigans. You know, we only have one video out. I guess uh, you know I want to start up a regular stream of content, so I'm gonna you know put a little bit of filler in while we sort this shit out. Um, and right now, I'm playing the Stanley Parable. Stanley Parable. Stanley Parable. Stanley Parable. Eh, fuck it. Anyway. But basically, it's a game all about making choices and some sort of shit like that. I don't know. But we're going to figure this out right now. And I'm going to have my first hands on right here. You can see my reactions and how I react and all that good shit. Right now, we're at a loading screen, as you can see. The end is never. The end is never. The end is loading. Nah. The end is loading. The end is loading. Nah. Hmm. I'm guessing it's supposed to say the end is loading never. Well, that can't be right, because it looks like the, the end may be loading right now. It's almost finished. Uh... This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed button, button, buttons on his keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor at his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul ripping, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all, in all, in all his years of the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong, shocked, Frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. I got up from my desk and stepped out the office. Ah, I don't wanna uh, some shit. Older. I touched something. Type on the keyboard. Can I stick my finger in the pencil sharpener? Can I stick my penis in the pencil sharpener? No? Oh, okay. No family guy references. Anyway. All of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co workers. computer left on over there, so that's kind of a trace. And I just turned that shit off. Okay. That works. Stanley went around touching Almost every sick. little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. I don't give two fucks. I'm gonna click every damn thing. Like, are any of these doors unlocked? I will open this fucking door. I will open this door right here. Cause there's shit inside here and I wanna touch it. Open, open, open. Please, please open. Oh, please. 
Are you really just doing this for the achievement? Click a door five times. Is that all that you think an achievement is worth? No, 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 no. I can't just give these merits away for such little effort. A measly five clicks. Now suppose you were to click the door 20 times. I would say that's the kind of effort that warrants recognition. But I clicked that door five times. I only clicked it like twice. I'm going to click it 20 times to get my achievement. Hmm. I have to say, I'm still not feeling the satisfaction of witnessing true effort for a noble cause. Perhaps 50 clicks will do it. Yes, almost certainly 50 clicks. Fuck you, buddy. Are you going to have me keep doing this shit and get it again? Alright, well, let's sit here and wait till I get to 50 clicks. Give my goddamn no, no, I'm, I'm still not feeling it. I I want this achievement to have meant something. It has to be a, a true reward for valiant effort. I want to see some hustle, Stanley. I want to see commitment, a willingness to go all the way, no matter what the cost. Why don't you go put 20 clicks into door number 417? You're a bitch. Where's door one, number 417? I want to click this door more. Alright, well, I'll find 417, and we'll, we'll click the shit out of that. But the numbers are going up. So how am I going to get to 417? Oh, we'll go ahead and we'll see. Oh, wait, no, 426. Oh, turn it off computer, I'm mistake. Click, 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 oh, turn off another computer, 417, here it is, all right, oh, great, now, go click a few times on door 437, so you want me to go all the way back to 437, are you just, Oh, wait, no. It's gonna make me Excellent! I think we're getting somewhere. Now, door 415. Let's give it 10 clicks or so. 415. This has become its own little adventure. Hmm. Excuse me while I scratch my ear. Hmm. 416, 415. Now, back to door number 437. You're an ass. Let's see, how about you click on, well, I don't know, the copy machine? All right, I just have me All right back to room 417. I'm really feeling it now. I think we're getting somewhere. Is this just gonna like place like gonna explode? Okay, yeah. now go climb on employee 419's desk. Really? Really? Are you serious? Yes! This is great! You're putting it all on the line, Stanley. I like that. Alright, let's keep it up. Go give me a few clicks on door 416. Oh, I don't wanna click anything else. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. 416. We've almost got it! Now the copy machine, do that one again! I kinda don't want to do this. It's kinda freaking me out. Right. Finish it off, Stanley! Five clicks on door 430! Yeah! We did it! Oh, wow. That felt amazing. Oh, you really earned it, Stanley. Nothing could hold you back. Yes, I'm very proud of how far we've come today. Just think, only a few minutes ago, you believed an achievement was worth five little clicks. Really, now? What were you thinking? That's my achievement. Okay, well, whatever, fuck it. I guess I did achieve something. I don't have steam up right now. 
And then I will keep on fucking walking. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yeah, I entered the door on my left. Should I mind trick? I entered. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Ooh, the employee lounge. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. Wow. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here yeah. in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply Ooh, stood here, that. drinking it all in. I wish I could drink one of these coffees, then. They ain't even shit in the mugs. What were they drinking? Yes, yeah. really, really worth it being here in the room. A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished, here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings. Really worth it. Yep, it is. And I'm not looking at a fucking painting. You would get your facts straight. I'm looking at... At this point, machine. Stanley's so obsession awesome. with this room bordered on creepy and reflected poorly on his overall personality. It's possible that this is why everyone left. Well, fuck everyone else. I can talk to them anyway. This room. Stanley sat wow. around waiting for more dialogue, but when a long time had passed and there was no more, he decided that the game was trying to send him a message. What message is that? Huh? What's your message? What does it say? A lot of time has passed. Can I get a soda, please? I want a soda. Or pop. Or however the fuck where you are they pronounce it. Picky ass people in their soda or pop or soda pop or there's a mug behind this chair. I can crouch. Okay. But at last oh, he'd going. had enough of the amazing room and took the first open door on his left to get back to business. Okay, will do. Hmm. I don't wanna. Let's go this way. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. Do not jump from the cargo lift while it is in motion. Will cause death. All right, so it causes death, but there's a penalty from jumping from it. They're gonna charge me money after I'm dead. Okay. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy. Nope, really, don't have I'm any not. Feet. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. Who's her? I don't trust you. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself, to put your work aside, to let her back into your life. She's been waiting. Mm. Who's been waiting? Who is she? Okay, well, there's an urgent message. Employees should never, under any circumstances, attempt to... I'm, I'm pretty sure we should be able to see the rest of that. It's very important. Okay. Okay, no. Fuck you. You want me to step into the pitch black darkness. Is that what you're saying? Ominous voice who I have no idea what you are, who you are. You want me to step into the pitch black darkness. Oh, I hope it's not a jump scare. 
That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this, to reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. This is only one choice to make here, isn't it? That's to pick up the fucking phone. Wait a minute before I do that. Hmm, what's this wire do? It goes to the wall. Do I need to crouch? Yeah, those are some deformed ass socks. As Stanley picked up the phone, a white light engulfed yep. him, filling him not just with radiance, but with hope. Hope for a life reunited one. Wait. Oh, goodness. Stanley, did you just unplug the phone? No, that wasn't supposed to be a choice. How did you do that? You actually chose incorrectly. I didn't even know that was possible. Let me double check. No, it's definitely here, clear as day. Stanley picks up the phone. He's taken to his apartment where he finds his wife, and the two pledge themselves to one another. Music comes in, fade to white, roll credits. Not picking up the phone I'll is actually it, somehow bitch. an incorrect course of action. How is that even possible? None of these decisions were supposed to mean anything. I don't understand. How on earth are you making meaningful choices? What did you... Wait a second. Did I just see... No, that's not possible. I can't believe it. How had I not noticed it sooner? You're not Stanley. You're a real person. <sighs> I can't believe Breaking I was so mistaken. Wall. This is why you've been able to make correct and incorrect choices. And to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you've made any more wrong choices, you might have negated it entirely. It's as though you completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real-world decision-making. Or did you not grasp the severity of the situation? Well, I won't have that kind of risk on my watch. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so we can educate you properly on safe decision-making in the real world. Please observe this helpful instructional video. Choice. It's the, the best hell? part of being a real person. But if used incorrectly, can also be the most dangerous. For example, in this scenario, a hypothetical real person named Stephen has a choice. He could spend years helping improve the quality of life for citizens of impoverished third world nations. Or he could systematically set fire to every orphan living in a 30 kilometer radius of his house. Which choice would you make? Remember that unlike here, the real world makes sense. And at no time should you make a choice that does not conform to rational logic. If you find yourself speaking with a person who does not make sense, in all likelihood, that person is not real. Allow the person to finish their thought, then provide an excuse why you cannot continue talking. Turn to a partner and practice saying, my goodness, is it 4.30? I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. Am I supposed to practice? My goodness, it's 4.30. I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. Hmm. I don't feel accomplished. I want to set orphans on fire, though. I want to set orphans on fire a lot more after watching that video. I think I need help. Excellent. Making choices on a regular basis is the best part to a healthy decision-making process. Most medical professionals recommend making at least eight choices per day. Do you make more than eight? Less? And finally, if you begin to wonder if your choices are actually meaningful and whether you'll ever make a significant contribution to the world, just remember that in the vast infiniteness of space, your thoughts and problems are materially insignificant and the feeling should subside. At this time, your instructor will guide you in an exercise to test and reinforce the material covered in this video. Ah, welcome back. You may have noticed that this room has begun to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. But not to worry. Now that you're properly informed on good decision-making, we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes ago and see what the correct thing to do would have been. This way, please. But what the hell is going on? 
the fu- There's a staircase railing right here. Or some sort of truck rail. Right, can, I, can I pick up the phone now? I'd like to pick up the phone. No. Alright, let me get the hell out of here before something weird happens. Now there's a gate on this thing now. What the hell? Now that we know your yeah, choices are meaningful, that. we can't have you jumping off the platform and dying. Imagine the main character dying senselessly halfway through the story. That story would make no sense at all. We just need to get you home yeah, as soon as possible before the narrative contradiction gets any worse. Unfortunately, it seems this place is not well equipped to deal with reality. there you'll right. take the door on the left back to the correct ending the story will have resolution once again and you'll be home free in the real world okay. now remember all you need to do is behave exactly as Stanley would that means choosing responsibly yeah, right and there. always yeah. putting the story first I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task just follow my lead and you'll be fine all right <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors he entered the door on his left. The door on the right seems so beautiful. Why do I want to do that? No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back in the other oh, direction. Perhaps we're not too late. Ooh. Ooh. Jesus Christ. Ooh. Oh yeah, there's some weird glitchy ass shit going on over there. It's... Yeah. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, it's ruined. You I can't believe after everything we talked about that you my story. You've destroyed my work. Why? For what? What did you get out of that? What did you think was so special about seeing the game undone? Left here like so much garbage, it, well, it's worthless now. And what am I supposed to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? To know that my story is now incorrect? How can I go back to that? I can't erase that knowledge. I'll have to live with it forever. Nope. Reliving its impossibility forever. Oh, I couldn't live that way. Is it better to shut the game down entirely? To willingly destroy all of my work? I don't know. What's the answer? What do I do? What do I do? What do I kill yourself? No, I have to. I have to shut the game down. I have to. I you have don't to do that. I'm in here. I'm in here. Oh. What happens now? I'm still here, here in this pile of rubbish, with you, you, who thought you were so clever. Now look where we are. My entire game is destroyed. It was the only thing in the world that was mine, and you've run it into the ground. What, did you think that would be funny? You just had to see? Didn't I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley? He actually knows how to do what I tell him to. He understands that if I say to do something, there's a damn good reason for it. That thought hadn't even occurred to you, had it? That there's a world outside of you? You're a child. Oh, yeah, you will. You, my story. If you'd just gone through the door on the left, you would have seen it. There was a whole underground facility. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. It would have been so perfect. I worked so hard on it. I tried so hard. Is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Maybe I should do the right thing now.
Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Now to solve a co-worker dispute with a co-worker. Let it ball up inside you. That's the only option. What? Uh, this meeting room is bored the hell out of me. I'm like getting tired from seeing it. Room closet. No. What the fuck? Oh, it's locked. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. I can do that. Stepping inside his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this until he saw the door with a voice receiver next to it. Surely behind this door lay all the answers to his questions. And beyond all probability, he knew the passcode. He had seen it on his boss's computer just last week. Night Shark 115. Was this the code to open the door? Would it still work? There was only one way to find out. Stanley had been trained never to speak up, but now he would draw from within himself the courage to face the unknown. He drew a sharp breath and then spoke the code. How am I supposed to do this? Stanley can't talk. Night Shark 115. <clears throat> Stanley spoke the code. Night Shark 115. He spoke it into the receiver right there on the wall. I did. I did. Night Shark 115. I'm talking. Can you hear I'm sorry. Me? Is there a problem? You didn't mishear me, did you? Please speak the no. code into the receiver. Otherwise, we can't get on with the story. This is a crucial step. I didn't mishear you. You must have misheard me. Okay, I'm fine. Gonna You're not going to do it. But you know what? It's pretty humiliating to bring you this far, only for you to suddenly decide you have better things to do. I asked you for this one single thing, for your respect. The kind of respect Stanley shows for his choices. He knows what it means to take a story seriously. If you didn't want to see what I had to show you, then why did you come here? You had a choice, you know. You could have gone through the door on the right. You could have done whatever the hell you wanted over there. Why did you come this way? Speak. Say something to me. Explain yourself, you coward. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door Tell on his Alan. left. Stanley? I'm looking down. Hello? Are you... Is everything okay? Stanley, please. I... I need you to make a choice. I need you to walk through the door. Oh, wow. Seriously? Are you listening to me? Can you hear me? No. Is everything all right? Stanley, this is important. The story needs you. It needs you to make a decision. It cannot exist without you. Do you understand me? Whatever choice you make is just fine. They're both correct. You cannot be wrong here. We can work together. I'll accept whatever you do. I simply need you to take that step forward, please. Choose. Do something. Uh. Anything. This is more important than you can ever know. I need this. The story needs it. So, you hear me? Are you there? Are you listening to this? Stanley, are you there? Okay. It's okay, I can wait. You need time to decide. Time to make sure your choice is correct. That is the best choice. That's all right. I'll wait for you to decide what's the right thing to do. Take as much time as you need. That last part sounded kind of sinister, but that's actually really sad, and the end is never. The end is never, the end is loading, the end is never. That was actually pretty sad there at the end, like. Just his voice, though. I mean, the fact that he's making Stanley do choices is 
fucking inhumane in the first place. Like a, a rat in the maze. But, no. Well, I think I'm going to continue playing this a little bit more. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're going to try and get everything situated with uh, Merciless Mafia Gaming and you know, all the GTA Online footage. Uh, if we can't get it situated, then you'll be able to see more of these videos like this. <sighs> and, uh, you know, possibly have fun with me. If this was fun, go ahead and like, subscribe, and, you know, do your thing. I guess. Anyway, I will hit you guys up later. Peace.